Okay, so this is going to be a super casual crochet and chat. I just want to catch you guys up on some life stuff's going on. And I'm just warning you, I am a work from home mom of a toddler. I have laundry going. Our air conditioner is on because it's hot. Jesse might make an appearance, and if he does, I'll have to edit it out because he's in his underwear and all that kind of jazz. So if you don't like noise in the background, this isn't the video for you, and you just have to leave, and that's not my problem. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to sit here and work on some dishcloths. I've been mindlessly working on easy projects the last couple weeks because I've just been trying to chill out a lot. I'm always so um, worried about getting awesome things done for not just to the videos but for my fair that's coming up and all that and I'm just trying to like step back and chill for a little while so I actually mentioned that in my last no kitchen name episode which I think was 83 uh, my hair looks crazy too because <laughs> I took a shower this morning and I let it natural dry so it's frizzy but anyways um, in my last no kitchen name episode I told you guys that I was kind of taking a step back from everything because I need to chill you know and work on some stuff and in the process of doing that, um, I was anticipating Devin being off from work the entire week of 4th of July. He was off the whole week. So that was cool and we were excited about that. And then so that Sunday, which was the, the Sunday before 4th of July, whenever that was. <laughs> I don't remember what day it was. I think it was the last day of June. Um, my mom had Jesse. She came and got him that evening. Uh, because their church didn't have even a church that day. They had some kind of dinner and they didn't have even a church. So she went ahead and came and got him that night, that evening. And uh, the next morning I woke up <laughs> like normal and was doing stuff around the house. And then I uh, always wake Devin up at 10 because he worked second shift. But he was off. That was his first day off. But I still let him sleep, you know, because he worked, I think he worked the night before. But um, anyways, I just went and literally woke Devin up at 10 and he was getting up and all that. And then my mom called. <laughs> And she said, um, you know, don't freak out, but Jesse wrecked his little four-wheeler and hurt himself. And I want you to come to see what you think about it. Because she didn't know if he hurt himself bad or if it was just, you know, he was just a little hurt and being a kid about it, you know. But, uh, so I said, yeah, of course. So, I mean, Je Devin got ready and drove up to my mom's, which is only like seven minutes away. She lives really close to us. Um, and when we went to her house, he was laying on the couch and as soon as I saw him, I knew that something was wrong with him because of the way he was acting. And then she told me that it was his right arm. So I looked at it, and as soon as I looked at his arm and touched it, I knew for sure something was wrong with it. Uh, because it had a big bubbled up spot in it. And um, I didn't know that if it was broken or not, or if, I, or if it was maybe swollen, or if he ripped a muscle or something. I, don't, I didn't know what was going on. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, we're definitely going to take him to the ER, so let's get him ready. So we got him ready, and we drove him down to our ER here, where we live. And we were there. It was like about 10.30, because <laughs> I woke Devin up at 10, and then we immediately had to leave to go get Jesse. So it was probably like 10.40-ish when we got to the ER. And, you know, they did everything, x-rays and all kinds of stuff. And they came back and said that his arm was broken. <laughs> on the, um, his right arm, you know, you have the two bones. You have the inside one and the outside one. The inside one was the one that's broke. And it's broke, like, right here on him. Um, it was a clean break. Nothing horrible, you know. It didn't, like, poke out the skin or shatter or anything like that. It was just, like, broke right in half. <laughs> and just a little out of place. But the little out of place, because his arm's so small, is what made that bulge out. Um... I'm thinking if it had uh, fallen any harder or something, it might have actually um, poked out of the skin, <laughs> which would have been terrifying. But um, our hospital, we live in a really rural area, and it's really, you know, we're in the south, so it's really small and countryish, I guess. Um, they are not equipped to deal with pediatric broken bones. And uh, none of the hospitals in the surrounding counties are either. So they had to send us to Nashville. And uh, we elected to drive because, uh, one, I didn't want to put him on ambulance because that would be scary. And two, ambulance <laughs> rides are really expensive. So uh, I didn't want to pay like $3,000 just to drive him to Nashville. So we, me, Devin, my mom, and the girl that I babysit because I had her that day, and Jesse, <laughs> we went to Nashville. And we left our hometown at, I think it was 2.16. And we didn't get to Nashville to about two hours later. It's usually an hour and a half drive, but traffic and stuff. 
uh, we hit some construction zones and all that. It took us a little while to get there. So when we got there, we went to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. Uh, the emergency department is where they sent us. So we had to do all that stuff again, tell them everything that happened, and they did more x-rays, and then they said, yeah, it's broken, obviously, and that it needed to be cast. So, um, and because of his age and all that, they wanted to sedate him. They didn't put him to sleep, but they, they basically made him super high, and he didn't know what was going on. And it's kind of funny, because <laughs> me and Devin was able to stay in there with him while they were getting him ready, and when they put the medicine in his IV, which was in his foot, which was a horrible experience too. That was a big, you know, it hurt him obviously and he was scared, so. But they, they put the medicine in and within a few minutes he was already, it was you know, going into effect. And probably not even a few minutes, like within the minute that they put it in there. But he was crying and whining and then he just went straight face. Like his mouth was hanging open and his eyes were just spaced out. And then he slowly just kind of leaned back and he was just not there. <laughs> so then we had to leave and they put the cast on and it's a cast it goes all the way up to here. It's from, you know, his hand and all the way up to like the middle of his fore or whatever this is called. It's not forearm, whatever that upper arm. <laughs> and um, so they did that. And then when we came back, he was starting to wake up a little bit. It took a while for him to wake up. And they wanted to wait for him to wake up all the way before they did Mark's race to, you know, check the set and all that. And when they finally did check the set, uh, it was set wrong or you know not not right not necessarily like they did they messed it up but like it wasn't straight enough or whatever so they told us that they were gonna have to take that cast off and reset his arm again and then put another cast on which was stressful because it was by that time it was already like six in the afternoon and we had been at the ER eight two ERs pretty much all day and Jesse wasn't allowed to eat anything from the time we left our town um, to go to Nashville in case they had to put him to sleep or do surgery. Um, they didn't want him to eat or drink anything. So we weren't eating or drinking anything either because, you know, you can't do that in front of your kid. And um, so we were all stressed out. We were all hungry. We were all thirsty. Jesse kept asking for something to drink. And um, it was just stressful. <laughs> it was really stressful. So we finally, after they reset it again, it took them about 40 more minutes to take the cast off, reset it, and put the new cast back on. They didn't put him back under or high or whatever they um i'm not sure what they did the second time because we weren't in there uh when we left the room he was still you know slightly awake from the first time they put him under it's not really he wasn't under whatever but um so we had to go back out to the waiting room and waited about 40 more minutes and i got annoyed of waiting so i went and asked him and then we finally got to go back there and um he was doing fine after that. They did more x-rays and it was like perfectly straight that time they showed us. I have the x-rays and I'll go grab them in a minute and show you if I can find them. I think they're right over there. But um, after that, he they told us that everything was fine and that they wanted to get him up and walk him around, you know, to help wake him up from being asleepish. And they wanted, they weren't going to send him home until he could eat something without throwing up. So they gave him a popsicle and he ended up eating two popsicles. <laughs> um, and he threw them up, so we had to wait even longer. We um, we didn't get to leave Nashville until 10 something. It was like 10 something that evening, uh, that night. And we, by the time we got home, we had to take my mom home. Jesse ended up wanting to stay with my mom because he like you know he cried and stuff, wanted to stay with her, so we let him. He had uh, pain medicine and all that um, Tylenol or you know kids Tylenol and. So he stayed with my mom. By the time me and Devin and the girl that I babysit got home, she ended up, you know, obviously staying the night with us because I had her all day. Um, it was 12.30. <laughs> and then I didn't go to bed until 1 something because, you know, I had to get cleaned up and eat and all that kind of stuff. And then went to bed. <laughs> and yeah, so the next morning we went and got Jesse and brought him home. Uh, and he was in pain for a few days after it. But then after that, he was pretty much fine. Back to normal, running around playing and everything. Every now and then he complains about it hurting, but um, nothing too bad, and nothing to the you know to the extent of needing anything harder than Tylenol. And um, this past Monday was a week after it happened, the eighth I think it was, and we had to go back to Nashville that day to go to the bone doctor because again there are no pediatric ones anywhere near us, 
So I had to go all the way to Nashville again uh, for a doctor appointment that morning. And Jesse, hold on for me. Hold on a minute. He's in his room. <laughs> but um, they did more x-rays and it was looking good. But it's still really fragile right now. So he's still, he has to stay, you know, off of furniture and can't go to playgrounds or anything like that. They said for at least two more weeks. So, but we do have to go back to Nashville again <laughs> this coming Monday and the Monday after that. And they said that hopefully the Monday after this coming one, so on two Mondays from now, um, they're going to hopefully put a smaller cast on, the one that's like from here down, so that he can do more stuff. And they said he could swim with it, uh, I guess, with it covered and um, all that stuff. I've been having to give him... Um, what are they called? Sponge baths, I guess. <laughs> and because uh, he can't get it wet at all. He hasn't been able to swim and he hasn't been able to play at the spa splash pad or anything like that, which is sad because that's he loves doing that kind of stuff. He can't rough house. He can't ride his full wheeler anymore, obviously, because he can't drive it. And um, which is he wants to ride it. This is a good size for a dishcloth. <laughs> but um, we actually put the full wheeler up. It's at his other grandparents' house in their garage because they got a big garage. Um, the grandparents who bought it for him felt guilty for buying it for him. My mom felt guilty for it happening when she had him. But it was an accident. It was inevitable. You know, he's eventually going to get hurt. And he'll probably get hurt again uh, before he's a grown man. But, um, and the four-wheeler that he was on wasn't a real four-wheeler. Don't, like, freak out think it was, like, a real four-wheeler. It's one of those kid ones that is made for little kids. It's kind of like those little cars and trucks that little boys and girls drive in, but it's just shaped like a full wheeler instead of a car. But it's one of those battery operated things that you have to charge with a cord. <laughs> he got it for his birthday. I can't remember if I put clips in from back then, but um, he loved it and it was just an accident. Accidents happen, you know. Uh, so there's no hard feelings towards any grandparent. I know it was no one's fault and it's like I said, it's inevitable. He's gonna get hurt. <laughs> we can't protect him from everything. And he's fine. He's in high spirits about it. He hasn't been bummed out much at all. He has a hard time using his hand because he can't, you know, grip stuff because the cast is pretty fat right there, you know, and his little fingers are so small that he can't really use his other hand, which is bad because he's right-handed um, and it's his right hand. So he might be left-handed by the time this is over. And um, he's doing good. He still plays and everything. He's fine. So it's not too bad. <laughs> It's, it was stressful when it happened, obviously, because it was a long day, and none of us got to eat, none of us got to drink anything, and we were worried about him. I was worried that he was going to have to have surgery or something like that, and um, that was scary. The doctor did tell us that had he been older, he would have had to have pins put in his arm, but because of his age and the fact that his bones are still growing, um, his, what was it, I think he said bone plates or growth plates or something like that. <laughs> that um you know he's super resilient because it's, it's a good age for that something like that to happen because their bones will grow back a lot quicker and easier than had an older kid or a teenager or an adult had broke it it would have required more assistance to grow back so i guess that's the silver lining of the cloud jess is coming hi everybody say it again hi everybody here hold your arm up so they can see your arm Ooh. It's kind of like a robot arm, huh? Alright, what do you want to eat? Uh, let's push. Okay, he's in there. He wanted a snack. I'm making dishcloths. I've made a lot of dishcloths and face scrubbies the last week or so. This is some yarn that was gifted to me by Becky from Funny Farm Crochet. I love the colors. It's probably blown out because of the window. <laughs> but I've been wanting to crochet because I love crocheting. But I've been wanting to not have to focus on patterns. So I've just been making random things like this. <laughs> and I do plan on making a No Catch Your Name episode. Hopefully in the next few days it'll be up. Um, just got to find time to record when there's not kids here. Because I can't show Jesse when he's in his underwear. And he's potty training so he's always in his underwear. <laughs> and the girl that I babysit I can't show her because she's not a kid. So it's hard to um, get moments to film. Here's this. <laughs> this cake was much bigger. I've made, I think, three dishcloths with this. So it's slowly using it up. But I do have a lot of finished objects to show you guys when the new kitchen, the new No Kitchen Name episode comes out. And some new webs. One's in this bag right here, actually. It's an octopus. 
um, trying to slowly make up some amigurumis for the craft fair that I'm doing in October. And um, like I said before, I'm just trying to kind of pull back a little bit uh, from sh making myself stressed out. So I have been working on a lot uh, more patterns that I want to work on and not ones that I need to work on for our county fair or the craft fair. Making sure he's not coming because he's in his underwear. But, um, so I've just been kind of, you know, I'm just doing my own thing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just taking a moment to relax. But I am, um, I think I've got some rags in here. Yeah, I got two dishcloths there that I made with two different yarns and some face scrubbies. I made myself some face scrubbies and I made the girl babysit some face scrubbies and my, I made my sister some. And I'll probably end up making my mom some uh, before I'm done because they're fun and super easy. I can do anything and make those. They're living in my cute little bag that I won from being 100 subscriber to the crochet closet. But yeah, so I just wanted to hop on and let you guys know what was going on <laughs> and why I haven't been super duper active. Uh, I am pretty active on the Facebook group because it's a lot easier for me to hop on Facebook and do stuff. The I have a Christmas in July cow going on. Mal is the make along. It's for everything. And um, it's going on really awesome. I've already got over 80 entries. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of entries to go through and divvy up and all that later. I will be making bags for the winners of that. And I actually will be making some bags for my shop in a couple, probably one more week. Because uh, I've been, I took a break for two weeks already. So one more week and then I'll probably get started on some bags. I already got a bunch of crab bags cut. I was working on some of those yesterday. And my plan is to finish all the crab bags and then make a bunch of bag sets and then reopen the shop with a bunch of stuff in it. And um, that way maybe it'll last a little bit longer. But yeah, so I've got 36. I've got 45 crab bags cut. <laughs> and they're different sizes. One's hook size and notion pouch size. And some are wider they're like wider for bigger things and yeah and I found a new pattern for a bag that I want to try to make soon and a new notion pouch bag that I want to try to make soon but it's nothing that I'm rushing it's just you know days when I have nothing to do I'll do that and what else oh also I'm working on designing my own pattern it's gonna be an amigurumi <laughs> we have a lot of amigurumis but it's gonna be for a future crochet along that I'm gonna host with that pattern coming up in the next month or two <laughs> and um yeah i'm excited about that i think it's gonna be super cute and uh yeah so i hope that it i hope i can get it done and get the pattern done and all that and um ready for the crochet along because i'm excited about it and i'm working the pattern that i'm making i'm trying to make it to where i can change parts of it to make it different amigurumi for different you know to make it look different but have like the same base pattern kind of like a doll pattern where you have like a doll body and then you can add stuff to make it different uh it's gonna be kind of like that i'm hoping <laughs> if i can get the kinks worked out of it but yeah so i just wanted to hop on and um update you guys a little bit and i will be putting a new no catchy name episode out hopefully this week what is today thursday probably this weekend then at least by sunday maybe i can try to get it up Devin has to work saturday so they might be on sunday that I can get it up because I just need like an hour window to record without Jesse popping in randomly because I have to edit that out a lot now that he's potty training and he's naked almost all the time but um so yeah I will clothe him if I have to and he just has to wear clothes speaking of potty training though it's going awesome um he even through all the hospital and doctor visits so far and the whole week of him being down with his arm hurting the first week you know he hasn't had any accidents at all um, all the way to National Back, he didn't and everything. And um, he has been completely accident free. I think today is the fifth or sixth day that he hasn't had any accidents whatsoever. He will he'll be playing or something and he'll come and tell me that he needs to pee or poop. And um, he'll go in there and do it. And he'll do it in there by himself and he'll holler at me when he needs help. <laughs> but other than that, it's awesome. Washing hands has been difficult with one casted hand. Because even though he's not actually doing anything to need to wash his hands, after he uses the potty, I'm still trying to like teach him to do that. So I do wash his hands even though I'm the one wiping his butt. <laughs> but, and, you know, he, I'm sure he touches the toilet and stuff while he's in there. But anyways, y'all don't need to hear that. He has, it's funny because when I first taught him to potty, he sat on the potty, obviously. Um, so he peed sitting down. And in the last week or so, he has discovered peeing standing up. And to him, that's like the most amazing thing in the world. And it's hilarious. I guess it's a boy thing. But, um. 
Now every time he tells me he has to pee, he says, Mama, I'm going to go pee standing up. <laughs> and it's just so funny. But he's doing excellent on it. And it's another one of those parenting things. And if you're a first-time parent or never had any kids, try not to freak out over stuff. Because every milestone he's hit, I've freaked out over stuff. Like when I had to introduce foods to him, I was like, oh, God, he's going to choke to death. He's not going to like anything. And then when I had to get him off of the bottle, it was scary. Because I was like, he's going to be hungry. He's not going to want to drink out of a cup or nothing like that. And I freaked out over every little thing. And I did the same thing with potty training. I was like, it's going to be so hard. He's going to be peeing and pooping everywhere. And it's going to be stressful. And then it's been easy. Um, maybe I got lucky with a pretty easy kid. But I think m mostly I freak myself out in my head over stuff. And then when I actually realized that it wasn't so bad, is when I start calming down. So if you're a new parent or about to be a parent or whatever, try not to freak out over every little thing. And just let things happen as they happen. But yeah. Anyways, I'm going to hop off here because I've got laundry going and dishes going and i got more stuff to do. i got some behind the scene, no catching, not top name stuff to do. <laughs> Can't wait to talk. got some crocheting to catch up on. i got to figure out what to make for dinner. Actually, I don't because I think I have leftover pot roast in the refrigerator. I don't know. i got to figure out all kinds of stuff. It's the life of a stay-at-home slash work-at-home mom. It's always something to do. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back to No Catchy Name. Um... You know, spoiler alert, and it's not really spoiler alert. I've been super busy lately. Uh, I made the video a while ago talking about how I was stressed and taking a break. And then the week after that, Jesse ended up breaking his arm. So I'm even more stressed and uh, just trying to take things a lot easier. So, yeah. But I wanted to do some casual videos. And I'm planning on doing a crochet and chat maybe later. And like a really casual, no kitchen name. Like on my couch and with Jesse interrupting and everything. But I wanted to share with you guys real quick. I just went out. It's... What is today? Thursday the 11th, I think. I think today's Thursday. I don't even know. I've been so out of whack because of everything going on. <laughs> but I just went out to my garden on our back porch. And I have this crocheted bag that I made. If I can find the pattern, I will put it in the description below. I love this. I've made a few of these little bags. And you can always make them longer just by repeating the pattern. But I use this to go out and get my vegetables. <laughs> We're only growing peppers uh little tomatoes what are they called little sweetie tomatoes and cucumbers because this was our first year of doing it and we wanted to just like see if we could do it and then next year we've already got ideas of planting a whole bunch of other stuff so it's been raining so our cucumbers are big <laughs> they're getting swelled uh, my favorite kind of cucumbers to eat are pickling cucumbers so uh i went out and i got five this morning i will show you down here this one's huge and this one's fat but yeah, I'm planning on making, uh, I want to make pickles, but Devin just left for work and I don't have peppercorns or dill. So, um, I'll probably just leave these on the counter and I got one from yesterday and tomorrow I might run to the store and get some dill and peppercorns and try to make some refrigerator pickles. I don't know how to can. I'd like to learn how to do that in the future when we have a bigger house because we're in an apartment right now and our kitchen is tiny <laughs> so i don't have room to store anything that i already have so nonetheless canning stuff so i'm gonna run tomorrow and get the stuff to make refrigerator pickles i have everything but those two things and probably run to my mom's to get some jars because i know she's got some canning jars up there and then i'm gonna try to make some refrigerator pickles and hopefully they're good <laughs> but i just wanted to share that with y'all and that i was using an actual homemade crocheted bag to bring in my harvest. <laughs> uh, I guess it should be made with cotton, but this is just acrylic. This is Red Heart. I think it's called Monet. Uh, variegated uh, or something like that. <laughs> or Water Lily. Something like that. <laughs> I can't remember. But I've had that forever. I used to have the same bag hanging in my living room, and we kept remotes and um, Xbox controllers, things like that, in it to keep them out of Jesse's reach, but then I just, I took it off the wall the other day and started using it to bring in my cucumbers and stuff like that. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys real fast.